in this chorus. O lamp of God, sweet lamp of God. I love that holy lamp of God. You've heard us of the words that you put among for us. O lamp of God, sweet lamp of God. Love at home, leave me that I may be a lamp of God. One more time, oh lamp of God, sweet lamp of God. I love at home, leave lamp of God. Let's raise our hands.
love and your grace. Thank you for the faithful and faithful for watching over us, Lord. We raise our hands with nothing in our hands that you bring, but simply to the cross we plead. Lord, we want to say thank you for this week that has gone by. We are just coming back to the house of the Lord just to say thank you, Lord. Father God, I pray for the husbands of this church. I pray for the wives. I pray for the young people. I pray for every visitor that is within our gates today. May they live with the blessing of God as they go home, as they go to their respective places, oh God. And Father God, may we be like those two brothers coming from Emmaus, saying that not our hearts bend within us as you spoke to us along the way. We honor you. We thank you for Malachi 4. We thank you for what he has brought in our generation, oh God. The plan of redemption, oh God, that is so unveiled. And Father God, we don't have to alter the plan, but find ourselves in the plan of redemption. Lord, we are so grateful. We love you. We honor you. We exalt your holy name. We thank you for who you are and what you made us to be. We love you. We thank you. Amen. We greet all of you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Turn around and greet the brother next to you, the sister next to you, and with a smile and say, God bless you. Welcome in the house of the Lord. Do it with a smile. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God in the highest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are so thankful. Just a few announcements and prayer requests. We are going to have our Wednesday service at uh, seven o'clock here so i want to congratulate you the attendance on wednesday is very good Amen. it's very encouraging so give yourself a round of applause <laughs> Amen. Amen. so and uh, we want to welcome all our visitors today we say may the lord bless you we have got brother jones brother jones where are you <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Are you from Brother Beckett's church? Yes, I can see the face. Looks familiar. God bless you. And then we have got Brother Damu. Brother Damu, where are you? If I'm pronouncing the name, let's, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> oh, it's a sister. Okay, sorry, my apologies. Sister Lydia, where are you? Let's give her a round of applause. Fortune, brother Fortune, there to get your blessing and uh, welcome in the house of the Lord. Uh, Sister Zamapa Twa, if I'm pronouncing the name, God bless you. Welcome in the house of the Lord. Sister Liche, Sister Liche, maybe she slipped out. God bless you. Sister Litiro, God bless you, my sister. Uh, Pastor Adi Perez Church. God bless you. Let's give a round of applause. Sister Faith. Okay, let's give a round of applause. God bless you. Uh, to all our visitors, if we didn't mention your name, you're welcome in the house of the Lord. Make yourself feel free in the house of the Lord. Amen. And on the 25th of March, we are going to have a youth meeting. It will be a Saturday. We are going to have it here at church. So I would like all the youth, uh, Brother Philip, just write your name and your number at the back. Even to those of you that are students, just write your name at the back. And if you still you are a newlywed, you are a youth. Uh, under, under 10 years, you still remain a youth. 10 years of marriage. So uh, Brother Theo will become your youth pastor. So, so please remain after church. And then write your names there, register there. We are going to have a youth meeting on the 25th. Amen. God bless you. And on the 19th of March, on a Sunday morning, we are going to have a wedding here. So, on Sunday the 19th, as you walk in, you just come with your present brother. Obed Simon will put it there in the treasurer's room. And then keep it for the newlyweds. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. And then, uh, 
Philip and Bella wants to thank everyone for their prayers, their love and their support and to those of you that came yesterday to the funeral of his father, he really appreciates it from the bottom of his heart. So he wants to tell to church that thank you so much. Amen. Let's continue praying for the family and then that God continues to be the balm in Gilead during this time of bereavement. Amen. God bless you. Lastly, Pastor Madiwa is here. Last time he came, he was a Muslim. He was alone. Praise the name of the Lord. So today, Sister Madiba is here. Sister Madiba, just raise your hand. There she is next to my wife. Praise the name of the Lord. And then I've got my favorite from the Madiba's house, Sister Bonolo. Just, Sister Bonolo, just raise your hand. Let's give her a round of applause. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. You know, uh, girl, girl children, they've got a way to get to their father. The other day, Unolo on her birthday was demanding that daddy must get her a smartwatch. And daddy must make a play. And Unolo, if the watch is not there, the watch is coming. <laughs> I will make sure. <laughs> God bless you. And then we've got Brother Teo. Matiba, just raise your hand. God bless you, Brother Teo. Let's give him a round of applause. I am missing the other name. To me, show, to me, show. Brother, to me, show, raise your hand. God bless you. You are all welcome. Uh, so, when you are coming to Pretoria to study, this is this is the whole church. Yeah. Let, let's give that a round of applause. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So, the last time Pastor Madiba preached here on the beauty of the church, and I believed everybody knew that and felt it was a blessing. And then I felt it in my heart that he needs to come and continue where he left off. And um, he is here to come and finish uh, what he started. Remember, that was not, this is not the preaching, this is the talk. Amen. So when you have the preaching as the year progresses, praise the name of the Lord. So we had talk part one, we are having talk part two. So the preaching will come when the jacket will be flying around. So, but for now, let's let's enjoy the flight. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's take a song. We're going to welcome Pastor Madiba to the fore to come and preach what the Lord has laid upon his heart. We'll walk in the light. It's such a beautiful light.
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. We certainly appreciate the Lord to be here. Amen. And I just came with my family. The two boys are baptized. Yeah. And the girl says she should be baptized. She's turning nine. Yeah. She says she's going to be baptized. Oh my. Amen. I believe that our children must be under the same faith that we preach. Yeah, How many believe that? Amen. I believe that the best preachers to the kids are the parents. That's right. They don't necessarily listen to what you say, they watch what you do. That's right. And you know, whenever we speak about God, we say our Heavenly Father. Sometimes children battle to have a relationship with the Heavenly Father because there is a crisis in the relationship between them and the earthly father. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and if you are a man, maybe your father was not what you thought or wished he could be. Be the man that you wish your father could have been. That's right. That's right. That's right. How many men say amen? Amen. Amen. We need uh, in this ministry, we need real men. That's right. Where children can overhear you praying for them at midnight. That's right. They say, Dad is a man of prayer. Yeah. I believe and trust in his prayer. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, uh, let's get into the business of the day. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And sister, my wife and I will be celebrating our 18th year on the 27th of March. Amen. All right. Amen. There was a, another message bully that said he doesn't know where I come from. I came yesterday into the message. Mm. Right. And I said, you have been around. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I, I, isn't it like that, Brother Simon? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. The people that say we came yesterday, sometimes we must just say, hey, my firstborn, speak to him how old you are. Yeah. And if you were born in the message or out of the message. Amen. Yeah. But we've got no time for the bullies. We've got time for the way. That's right. Amen. That's right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It reads, you read after me, I read, then you read after me. Finally, brethren, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. If there be any praise, think on these things as we bow our heads. The gracious Heavenly Father, we are reporting for duty this morning. Undertake for us, dear God. As I stand here, my desire is not for showmanship. I want to stand here with an honest heart to present the oracles of God. That your people can be can benefit, dear God. And as they benefit, may I too benefit. Amen. Dear God, the sick may they be healed this morning. The discouraged may they be encouraged this yes. morning. Amen. The wounded may they be mended this morning. Amen. Whatever damage that the enemy may have caused. Dear God, by the time we are done with the service, we want a full restoration. Restoration in our personal lives and 
restoration in our families, restoration in our marriages, restoration in our children's lives, restoration in this assembly, because you said, I'm the Lord God and I will restore all. Yes. Dear God, we bless, dear God, the, the pastor, the local pastor, uh, together with his lovely family, we bless the elders of the church and the entire laity, and we pronounce blessings upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you richly as you take your seats. I think here Paul was advising us that whatsoever things are true, and whatever thing, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, and whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, and if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So he wanted us to have honest thoughts. Hallelujah. He wanted us to have just actions and to have pure thoughts and pure intentions and anything that is lovely. He wanted us to concentrate on that and even things that are of good report. We live during a world that is just full of negativity and there is a, a disparate need of positivity. Yes. Sometimes even pulpits have become a dispensary of negativity. And I think by God's grace may it not be the case this morning. Because when people come to church, we want them to be edified and be elevated in the spirit that is our desire. Last time I spoke about the beauty of the churches, the character of the people, and that's where I want to carry on from there. What makes the church beautiful is the people inside the church. And we, want, we spoke quite a lot last time when I was here, and I want just to go into, into, into deeper into these things. Now, in the message... The future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride. Brother Brenham speaks about an experience that he had in a motel. If the text is just too much you don't see, don't worry, I'll read here. He says, I went to a motel yesterday to see a young lady I wanted to talk to. Her father and mother were present and I had to go to the manager to find out where the room they were in. He said, your brother, Branham, that's up at the Oaks. I said, yes, sir. He said, I want to shake your hand. He introduced me to his wife, a very nice couple. They said, every person in this motel is attending your services. We reserved it for them and said, all, all all of our customers were turned down. And I said, well, I thank you for that. He said, Brother Brennan, one of the nicest bunch of people I ever seen are the people that comes up here that attends your meetings. Are you getting what he's saying here? This is, this is not a believer. This is an unbeliever. This is a motel owner. But when he observed the people that attended Brother Brennan's meetings, he came to the conclusion that these are the nicest people. Amen. And my question is, how did they conduct themselves? How did they interact with the bosses, interact with the waitresses? Uh, and let me tell you, if you are a message believer and you don't tip at a restaurant, something is wrong with you. Amen. Are you hearing me? You watch how a person relates to other people, it shows who they are. Yeah. The, the, you see, the, the danger part is that sometimes we try to speak big things, but those things are not expressed in our lives. But we want the gospel is here to be expressed. 
people must see Jesus Christ in your life, not to the theory of the message. That's right. You, you see, when these people attended to this uh, or lodged in this motel, they didn't condemn them and tell them that, look, you don't even know the gods and the prophets. You did that. No, 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 no. They, they had a way to relate to them. They treated them with dignity. Until this man realized that this is a special group of people. I am saying we need the sweetness to return back among message believers. There's been bitterness and so forth, but by God's grace, we want bitterness to be eradicated and we want sweetness to abound among us. That's right. I guess you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, do you agree that uh, the character of these people made the church to be beautiful? That's right. That's right. I guess it made them to say, we want to meet Brother Brennan. Yeah. Look at his people. Look how they live. Look how they talk. Look yeah. how they dress. Yeah. This is uh, this our nicest bunch of people. Yeah. And I believe this was a, an easier couple to invite you to church. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because people had become a sermon yeah. through their lives. And this one realized that this gospel is alive. I see it being manifested in this people. And that's what we need in the end time. Are you still with me? All right. Now, the prophet of God says in the message, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Paragraph 10. He says, and live true to your church. If you go to a real good gospel, full gospel church, you live just as true to God. You don't have to live true to the church. If you live true to God, yeah. you, will live, you will be true to the church. Yeah. All right. yeah. Brother Brennan, in one message, he says, if you cannot be honest with God, you can be honest with your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yes, this church needs you to be true to it. Amen. This church needs you to be loyal to it. Yeah. And maybe someone will say, how can I be loyal to church? I want to be loyal to God. When you serve this one, you serve God. Amen. And the loyalty that we are looking for is not a big money in the collection plate. Amen. We are looking for holiness. Yeah. Why? Because you know, your life can make prayers to be hindered. Yeah. And your life can make prayers to be answered. Yeah. This morning the Holy Spirit is here, but what attracts the Holy Spirit is the quality of lives of the members in the church. Yeah. You know, Muruti, they say uh, every church has got three kinds of believers. And I told God, I said, my job as a pastor is very simple. I'm there just to manage the ratio. I don't want the unbeliever to outnumber us. I don't want the unbeliever to outnumber us. I want us to outnumber the make believer and the unbeliever. That's my responsibility as a pastor. I can't do away with the two, but I've got to make sure that they are outnumbered. Because once the church is outnumbered by unbelievers, yeah. then there is a spiritual crisis. Yeah. If it's outnumbered by make believers, there is a spiritual crisis. Yeah. But I believe in the original seed ministries, we want believers yeah. to outnumber any other group. Yeah. Solid believers, yeah. devoted yeah. believers. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. The pastor says, I can talk, we'll come and preach the other time. Yeah. You know, when I, I came into the message, I must have been, the time I came across the message, it must have been nine, I was nine years. Mm. And later, I accepted the message around the age 13, 14, the 13, yeah. and I started preaching from 14. Wow. Yeah, now I'm a middle-aged man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, when I came, I was naive because I thought everyone that has got the spoken word and follows William Branham is a Christian. But in the process of time, I've realized you can follow William Branham and still not be a Christian. 
I'm going to say it. You can have message tapes, message books, and attend message church and still not be a Christian. Maybe let me rattle your names. You can even be a preacher of the message of William Brennan and still not be a Christian. And I think we need to begin to ask each other certain questions that we are afraid to ask each other. Are you really a Christian? Are you here? We're going to talk. Yeah. Now, because a Christian forgives. Yeah. A Christian forgives. That's right. That's right. And I've met people that who whose stack of spoken weight is lower than in terms of height than their grudges. Their grudges are higher than their stack of spoken weights. No, no. They preach, they attend the message church, but bitterness. Yeah, yeah that's right. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. Sister, Amen. your husband can be in the message and come to the message church. Can be in the message, yeah. but you find the message is not in him. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And, and the reason we are losing young people away from faith is because they don't see this message in their parents. They hear conversation, they know this conversation is not of a message believer. In this family, we are just pretending. You know, there is this family God that God has recognized it. Even this morning in this church, I hope we are all spirit filled Christian. That's right. And if you are not spirit filled Christian, then you are in the process. You are still working towards it. And as I unfold with my message, you will understand why I'm zooming onto this. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Because why? When you've got the Spirit of God, you live like God. Yeah. You speak like God. Right. You exhibit the traits of God. Yeah. Are, you, are you hearing me? Yeah. Now, in the message, why are people so toast about paragraph 71? The prophet says, now speaking this, there is two different types of Christianity seems strange, but I will say two different types of, I will say two different faces would be a better way to use not two types, two faces the same Christianity but two faces of it one of them is an intellectual or a mental conception of what God has said in his way and of Jesus Christ by the way of knowledge and the other is experimental experience that God has given the man in his heart. Yo. One is a profession, Amen. another one, and it's a mental conception, but another one is a personal experience. Yo. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, when you've got mental conception, you can be convinced otherwise, Amen. depending on facts that are being presented unto you. Yeah. But when you've got a personal experience, a personal experience can overwrite the facts. Why? Because we are not worshipping a factual God. We are worshipping a true God that must be revealed, that must be believed, not understood. The, the, message, the message is not a bunch of facts. The message is revelation. Something contrary to the message, and a believer can disregard the facts and look at the word of God. What the word says? Are you still with me? There are certain things the devil is going to say to you, and they're going to be factual. But if something can be factual and yet not be the truth, and I say the message is not factual, but the message is the truth. That's why you cannot verify the message with Google. You need to the Holy Ghost to verify the message of the hour. In 
the beginning was the way. The way to us with God. And the way to us God. And the way became flesh. Not in the beginning was Google. And Google was with God. No, the way to us there before Google. How many young people are you here? The weight is higher than Google. The weight is the tree of life, and Google is the tree of knowledge. That's why before I preach to you, I don't go to Google. I go to the Almighty God. I say, they are your creators. Give me the message for today. We want a revelated church. Yes. You know, even some of the squabbles that we have in the message is because people don't discern the Lord's body. Yes. The Lord's body is not a local assembly. Yes. The Lord's body is not a local assembly. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord's body is individuals from different local assemblies. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You know, and I don't believe in regional revelation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in the universal move yeah. by the universal God yeah. for the universal church. Yeah. If I mean we beg and say we are the only one that has it, I'm actually bringing a blasphemy yeah. because I said this message has failed. No. Why is it only succeeding in women? Why not in China? Why not in Malawi? Why not in Japan? But for it to be a success, it must move globally. Not by the individual, but, the, but through the body. The days of one man ministry are done. Are you still with me? This is a body ministry. Again. I had a, a young man that trying to convince me that somebody is the man of the hour. Then I say, what happens if he dies? I said, brother, as you talk to me right now, he may be dead where he is now. You don't know where he is, you don't know the state of his health. But I said, if you were talking to me about Jesus, then you are sure that Jesus won't be sick. Yeah. You are sure that Jesus can't die because he died and rose again. Yeah. Are, you, are you hearing me? Yeah. The minister cannot be Madiba. Yeah. When I leave here, I can die on the end four. Yeah. But the minister must tell you all. This is not a minister of a man. It's the minister of God. Even when William Brennan was taken off the scene, but the minister is getting on. Because it's not the minister of William Brennan, but it's the minister of Christ. I hope we are together. It is my desire that everyone in the building can have a personal experience. Folks, if you don't have a personal experience, you're going to be shaken. And if you've got certain reasons why you are in the message, they're going to be shaken. You know, we've got a material in the message. Even if everyone can backslide from the message, but there are certain individuals. Even if pastors leave the message, deacons leave them, there are certain material that will never leave the message. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are certain people that are inseparable from this message. They can be hated, they can be despised, they can be rejected, they can be undermined, they can be cast, but they will still hold on. But, but others, even if the poor pastor can, while walking in, and instead of greeting you, he tends to look somewhere, Maybe he's attracted by something somewhere and he misses you. You get offended. And coming to church becomes difficult. Because why? You are coming to please the pastor. But there are people that are here, they are not here to please Brother Blessing. They say, Brother Blessing, this is bigger than you. This is bigger than all of us. We are here for something bigger. Whether you treat me or you don't treat me, it does not matter. Two faces of Christ.
Christianity That's right. on two types of Christians. Yes. In the book of Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and 27, the Bible says, and read with me so that you stay awake. And your heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. You see, this is one stage. A new heart I will give you. A new right. spirit. Why do you do need a new heart? He needs to remove a stony heart Amen. and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. And thereafter, he needs to give you a new spirit. Amen. Now, many people, they stop here. But let's carry on. 27. I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments. And do them. And do them. So you, you cannot keep God's statutes and judgments and do them without first having a new heart. That's right. But a new heart is not enough. Then you need a new spirit. And a new spirit is not enough. You need my spirit. We, we're going to unpack that. I like Bring it. this diagram here. The next one. So, you've got, thank you, Mrut. Now, you've got, you've got the first stage. And next time when I come, I will preach on the message, the pneumatics of God. Amen. It's another time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, I can invite myself. <laughs> and at that place, I may say, God willing, but yes, uh, God has already shown his will. <laughs> now, when, when you come into the message, or before you came in contact with the message, you had an old spirit. And you had an old heart. And you were dangerous. A man or a woman with old heart and old spirit is dangerous. They are unpredictable. Hallelujah. And you young ones hear me, never marry a man or a woman with old heart and old spirit. Are you with me? Now, then thereafter you come, then God removes Hallelujah. Amen. The old heart. Amen. And he gives you the new heart. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then once he has given you a new heart, then he gives you a new spirit. Amen. Now, a lot of times, most people, they stop here. Yeah. Yeah. This, is a, this is what we call a borderline. Mm. This, is, this is as well even more dangerous yeah. than here. Yeah. No. No. Are you with me? Yeah. Because when you operate from here, it's your efforts. And, and you see the message as a bunch of rules. Are you with me? Yeah. But, but I will show you why you need a new spirit and why you need a new heart. Yeah. But Brother Brown says life isn't the third. Now, when, when you reach perfection and you come to this stage, this is what we call a point of no return. Yeah. Amen. This, this, you know, there are, there are people that will lose the joy of salvation, but they will never lose salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, then God gives you a new heart, then he gives you a new spirit, then he puts his spirit. Yeah. Then now you've got perfection. Yeah. Are, you, are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to come here so that you understand. Now, when we say a church is beautiful, 
It's not audiovisual system, as I said the previous time. It's when you've got a bigger number of these people in church. Yeah. Oh! Are you with me? These, these people, they now we call them God's ambassadors on the face of the earth. Yeah. yeah. Whatever they say, God even backs it up. Yeah. God can allow them to fail. Yeah. Because they are God's representatives on earth. Yeah. But this one is still in the process. Yeah. And this one has not yet entered in. But here is the danger. One can be baptized and still be here. No. No. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's come here. Brother, let's come into the next slide after this one. Let's move this one and come to this. Next one. Brother says in the message, the intervene. He says, notice. You put a new spirit. You put a new spirit. God has, has to give you a new spirit, or you couldn't even get along with Him. You can't get along with yourself. That old spirit that you had in you. That's why I say, when you are on the first stage, you can't even get along with yourself. You know that there are people that can't get along with yourself. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's why, and if he's a minister that can't get along with himself, every time he's given the pulpit, he bleeds on the pulpit. Yeah. 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 That's right. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. He says, so he's got to put a new spirit in you so that you can get along with his spirit. Then he says, he carries on, I will put a new spirit in them. I will put my spirit in them. He said, after he has given you a new spirit, that's you. Don't get it confused with God's spirit. It's not. It's your new spirit. So a lot of people get a new spirit. They think it's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He said, that's, your, that's, that's you. Don't get it confused with God's spirit. It's not. It's your new spirit, so you can get along with the Holy Spirit if He ever gives it to you. Amen. Because you, in your condition, never get along. You can't get along with your wife. You can't get along with your husband. You can't get along with your neighbor. How are you ever going to get along with God? So He has to give you a new spirit. Yo. Let me pause here for a while. Yeah. Why is it necessary that God must give you a new spirit and the old spirit makes it difficult to get along with your wife, with your neighbor, with your fellow believers? Is because most of the time, remember, we are fighting a spiritual warfare. Yeah. And you are part of a family tree. If you are, if you are Fandage, you are part of the family tree of the Fandage. That's right. If you are Mapata, you are part of the family tree of the Mapatas. Yeah. That means all the spirits that dominate your family tree, yeah. Yeah. they are following you. That's right. That's are you right. with me? Yeah. And without a new spirit, you are vulnerable to the old spirit, yeah. and it can be a family spirit. Yeah. And sometimes a family spirit can cause a confusion in the church. Yeah. I'll say it one more time. Family spirit can even cause confusion in the marriage. So for you to be a message believer, you must let go of your old spirit. You must let go of your family spirit. You, you can come here and say, look, according to my family, we are short tempered. Short temper is a demon. Can I get an amen again? Short temper is a demon. And, and uh, you know, our ministry is not to, pronounce, to, to provide you with the mechanism to deal with chronic demons. Come on! Come on! No, our ministry is to cast out a demon. Everyone here must.
must live above their family spirits. Can I get an amen on that one? Have you seen family spirits in church? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Preacher, preacher. Are these days? Let me not go there. <laughs> They even put a decoration on family spirits. Yo, yeah, that's right. All right. Hmm? Yeah, true. You know, I, I am, I am baptized. I am in the message. I am a pastor. My children, if they do not come through the same process, they can become what I could have become without the message. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now, what makes the church to be beautiful is because all the spirits are outside. Yes. We are led by one spirit. Yes. Because if we can be led by different spirits, Chinese yes. Maniba spirits, Mapata spirit, Fanek spirit, it's going to be a confusion. Yes. But every time we come to church, we want the Holy Spirit. Yes. We want the Holy Spirit to have the preeminency. Yes. That's right. Sometimes some people living in the message cannot say I'm sorry because they are dominated by their family spirit. Yeah. The tragedy is that even me, I'm here to preach. No. They will minister today. All right. They are dominated by family spirits behind the pulpit. Yeah. You can see this is not the Holy Ghost. Yeah. This is his family spirit. Yeah. Right. Arrogancy. Yeah. All right. Oh, when God comes, He moves out pride. All right. When God comes, the, the quality that attracts God is the humility. Where would I be had it not been of you, the Lord? Not I am, not I am. No, that's the David. No wonder, brother, don't say I'm a sinner saved by grace. And in one message, you say. The difference between you and the drunkard in the street is great. Are you hearing me, believers? So, with the new old spirit, you can't get along. And parents, hear me out. You know, parents normally, even in the message, when they've wronged their children, they can't say, I'm sorry. They buy McDonald's. Come on. Now, when, when you raise your girl charge in that manner, then he believes that people can do whatever they can do as long as they're going to buy them something. Are you with me? But when you teach your child, when somebody has wronged you, they come and apologize. And not only apologize, but apology must, repentance must have food. Yeah. That you have changed. Yeah. Come on. A change of a believer is an affirmation of an apology. Yeah. All right. yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Ma Mama never apologized to you. Yeah. Dad never apologized. Even to the ministers never apologize. Yeah. 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 You, you know, you know, one thing, I'm not a cheap Christian. Yeah. Uh, me, if Brother Brandon was not genuine, I was not going to be here. But it's because I have seen that a man is genuine. You know, a man that can come before the church and say, you know, I said this, I was wrong, forgive me. That, that's a man that I can follow. A man that can acknowledge when he has made a mistake. Not a superman, but a humble man of God. A man that can say, look at me, I told you a lie. Brethren, from America to China and back to Africa, there's never been a minister that stood behind the pulpit and said, I told a lie. The only minister in the message that ever stood behind the pulpit that said, I told a lie and I repented, it was William Brennan. And even me, I've not done it. Only one man, FBI was looking for me, I made my wife to lie. Now today you want to tell us that you can tell us that Brother Bram is a liar. He's the one that told us where he lied. And he repented yeah. where he lied. That's why we believe him. Yeah. Have you ever had any minister say he lied? No, no. Only William Brennan 
the message. Nothing but the truth. Only William Brennan. Yo, yo, yo. God help us. And the council says, I'm sorry. Yeah. I made my wife to lie. Yo. You know, you know, he said when the FBI phoned and he said to me, tell him I'm not here. He says he immediately rushed out of the house to make it look like it's the truth. But he realized that hey, I'm lying. And he didn't just fix it between the wife. He called that man and said, I lied to you. He didn't just fix it with that man. He came to the church. I lied. And that's at the end of us that look for the truth. We said, This is our man. This is the caliber of the man that we regard as a prophet of God. What chance take us? Family spirits. We want we want families to come to church. That's right. Family, it's nice to have the whole family. Yeah. Even the nephews and cousins. But when they come as a click and they don't have the Holy Ghost. The day you offend them, they all take a flight. Oh yeah. Come on. I'm preaching the gospel here. Yeah. I say, but no, the matter was only between me and the cousin. But the rest of family has joined in. No, we don't come there anymore. Then what did they do to you? No, 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 no. Our cousin. <laughs> Family. Spirit. And when you are a sister, you are married in such a family, you will suffer. Yeah. It will be a family that is in the message, but they can never say I'm sorry. No, no. They are right on everything. My, my May this church come under the preeminence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. You couldn't get with your wife, you couldn't get with your husband, you couldn't get along with your neighbor, you couldn't get along with God. He has to give you a new spirit before you can get along with him. That's why Paul says, our spirit bear record with his spirit. Because there must be alignment, a relationship. So he puts a new spirit in you, then he puts his spirit in you, gives you a new spirit, a new outlook, new faith, then he puts his Holy Spirit in you. Then you become different from your own people. Hallelujah. Amen. Didn't Brother Ram say most of the time people instead of getting the Holy Spirit, they get one another spirit? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. If if Brother Mapata is, is my friend as a fellow minister, I expect that those that I hate him as hate. Yeah. Right. No. The other time we were not having services. I don't know whether it was December or somewhere some time back. I told the church, I said, you are free to visit any church. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, pick up even the churches that you think disagree with us and visit them. Yeah. So that you test our maturity. Yeah. Come on. All right! Yeah. Yes, sir. Now you have heard me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't tell people, don't go to that church. Don't go. No, I've given them the weight. Yeah. They can visit anyway. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care. Yeah. But they know the standards. Yeah. But if you are not sure, then you say, don't go there, don't go there. Don't. No, 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 no. Yes. Yeah. We are free. Yeah. Right. Now, the impersonation of Christianity, paragraph 93. Now, watch. His spirit was different from your new spirit. And many people get the new spirit and think they get the Holy Spirit. They get feeling happy, jump around. Maybe do a few do a few things religiously, and they think that they got the Holy Spirit. Oh no, the Holy Spirit makes you act different. The Holy Spirit makes you think different. The Holy Spirit was put in the middle of your new spirit. 
and your new spirit was put right in the middle of your new heart. Hey. The new heart, the new spirit, and in the middle of the new heart, God said, I will put my spirit in you. So this morning, if you want to be a real Christian, you must have a new heart. Yeah. Then you must have a new spirit. That's right. Then in the middle of the new heart, in the middle of the new spirit, yeah. then God put his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Then you are a Christian now. Yeah. Now, you know, yes, they asked Brother Billy Paul, yeah. what is the greatest miracle that you have ever seen Brother Brennan perform? He says, I've seen many miracles, but the greatest miracle that I've ever seen Dad perform is that I couldn't tell his enemies from his friends. Yeah. He treated them the same. But today, the pastor would want you to know his enemies. Yeah. Oh. These are not our enemies. These are our brothers. Yeah. They may be overtaken by a certain spirit, but we've got to love them. Yeah. We've got to love one another. Yeah. And even in this church, whenever you feel that you can't get along with somebody, visit them. Yeah. Or invite them for a cup yeah. of coffee. Yeah. If you have that they spoke bad about you, yeah. don't go and find other people to support you. Yeah. Or invite them. Yeah. And say, maybe it's my brother, maybe she misunderstood me. He misunderstood me, but let's have a cup of coffee. Yeah. You will see a demon fleeing away. Yeah. 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 And the church will be victorious. Yeah. Yeah. But what have we done? Yeah. Yeah. If I can get along with Brother Blessing, then I call Brother C. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> then he calls someone, then we clap against him. Yeah. It's not a Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit is when Brother Blessing says, you know, Brother Simon didn't treat me well. Then I say, Brother Blessing, let's get into the car. Let's go to Brother Simon. Oh, it, and let's just go in there and just enjoy the fellowship. Amen. Are you with me? The devil first, before he destroys you, he isolates you. Yeah. We said, may there never be isolation. Wow. Always be among the believers. Yeah. Fellowship with believers. Commune with believers. And another thing, I have seen gossip disguised as a prayer request. No, brother blessing, we need to pray for brother Obed. You know, this, this is a gossip. as a concern. Yeah. It comes as a but it's gossip. Yeah. What is gossip? Gossip is anything that makes you think less of your brother. Yeah. I will repeat gossip is anything that makes you think less of your brother or of your sister. And it is anything that can never be said in their presence. Yeah. 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 Even if, if, it, if it is a genuine prayer request brother, yeah. why is it him not yeah. reading it? Why is it you bringing it? Do you have a permission to tell me about it? Let's go to him. Then you will see a demon trembling. We need to keep the message clean. We need to be people of integrity. Can somebody say amen to that? Pastor Blessing, if you want to go far with God in the ministry, in church, let them all be souls. Yeah. yeah. That's right. There must never be a spy. Yeah. Oh, no. Because if you have a spy, your spy will be bought by another mask. Hey. We want brothers and sisters. Not uh, the kind you have you had. Preach! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm preaching to myself. Yeah. Are there people in the building Amen. who have ever thought less of somebody based on what they have had being said yeah. about them? Amen. Amen. Oh, you guys that have never done that, God bless you. You are angels. Come on! 
after the service, you must give us the tips. How many in the building have ever hated somebody or disliked somebody even though they have never spoken to them based on what they have had somebody say? That's right. preacher. I wish you can do that survey through the entire message community. You will be very shocked. That a man can hate another man without having met them. Just because of what somebody said. Come on now. Yeah. Brother Bram says you don't need to kill the man yeah. with a knife. Yeah. Just say something yeah. to kill his influence. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And we pastors, we are very vulnerable to that. Yeah. Yeah. If I've got these spectacles, next time I change them. Then somebody told me, you know the pastor is finishing the church man. Did you see how spectacles have been changed? Next time when you come to church, you don't hear the gospel. You are thinking about my life. Come on, pastor. I'm preaching. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Come on. Just a remark that knocked off your confidence. Hey. And after he has done that, don't think the devil is going to leave you. No, the devil keeps on whispering. Yeah. And he keeps on whispering. Yeah. And in no time, it becomes difficult to wake up in the morning to come to church. He's waking on you. Yeah. The very one that they gossiped about, he still goes to church. Come on. He still sings hallelujah. But you are having a bad day. Yeah. But today, be liberated. And say, devil, get off my shoulder. As a pastor, when I've got a man coming to gossip to me, I get very upset. Yeah. That, okay, somewhere another pastor is with somebody, they're giving the pastor yeah. a testimony. Yeah. This, <laughs> this one. <laughs> Treat me so cheaply to tell me about this. <laughs> How is this going to edify me? Another pastor has been told, Pastor, what you preached last Sunday. During the week, I thought about it. This is what God has done. But me, I'm sitting with the gossiper. I said, Pastor, leave my office. Sometimes measure what people think of you by the conversations that you have with you. Come on, tell me, tell me, do you think you can go to Bill Gates and be in the office and go to my brother blessing? No, no, no. Because you respect the man. Exactly right. You're gonna talk about things that interest you. Exactly right. That's right. Nothing but the truth. That's right. Check conversations. Because conversations shape the atmosphere in the child. If the conversations are right, the atmosphere becomes right. And if the atmosphere is right, the Holy Ghost comes down. But if the conversations are not right, the atmosphere won't be right, and the Holy Ghost won't come. What conversations are we having? They've got a problem. There is a problem. There's a problem in paradise. Okay. Yeah, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the one that you gossip, the one that you allow to gossip with you when you are gone, yeah. he goes to gossip yeah. about you yeah. Because once a gossip, or always a gossip. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, I detest a gossip. Yeah. I don't want any company with a gossip. Oh. The gossip of what ruins your soul. Nothing but the truth. Hallelujah. Oh, and you know how it starts. Bring it home. 
you know, people say. Every time when the people, the person says, people say, say, let's live now. What do you say? But what do you say? Believers, as a message believer, you must respect yourself. And respect your partner. And respect your family. It's never wrong to tell somebody that my sister, you always say, but what you bring here doesn't edify me. Uh, don't visit me, let's pray about it. I don't say anything wrong about that. I absolutely don't. Yeah, are you hearing me? It gives your family dignity. Brother Branham says, and this is my wish about this church. And the message is right. And the church, paragraph 37, he speaks about three types of churches. He said, let me ask this, let me give you an illustration here. Here is one sphere, here is another sphere, and here is another one. It's three. Now down here is the nominal church. Now up in here is the sublime church. That's where we are supposed to be, right next to, next door to heaven, where the power of God is leaking down. Maybe let's let's go a slight further. Yeah, let me read while you are watching on the diagram. He says we've got three spheres. He says we've got a nominal church, a nominal church. Then you've got a full gospel church. Then you've got a sublime church. Wow. Now, you, you see, when, when you say you are a church, you need to ask, what type? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, somebody told me, says, ah, these days, everyone, wherever you go, everyone says it's a pastor. The people have cheapened pastor sheep. Mm. Then I told him, I said, you know, there was a time around 95 where you remember the time when cell phones were not that really available? Yeah. I think youngsters will not know. We had a big Motorola yeah. that people used to put around the belt yeah. to show that they have arrived. <laughs> so now, now everybody today, even here, if I can say all of you raise your hand, everybody's got cell phones. Yeah. But the question after is that, what type? All right. All right. Yeah. So when we say, how many have got cell phones? We all raise our hands. Yeah. But how many have got the iPhone Pro 14? <laughs> then hands go down. <laughs> because now we are judging no longer the gadget. We are judging the features. So I don't care how many people become pastors in the message. But I want to check what type of a pastor is this one. What quality of pastorship is this one? Hey! Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Studying a message church is very easy, folks. Yeah. I come from marketing background. Very easy. You just buy sound system yeah. and go to a campus, maybe a university, yeah. and you give flyers to the students. And on the flower on the bottom, we tell them that lunch shall be served after church. Yeah. The church will be full. Yeah. Then we can start to say, brothers, I'm busy with the ministry. But to get a sister yes. to remove yeah. their makeup, yeah. their earrings, yeah. and wear modesty. Yeah. Oh, brother, that oh, one. Oh, oh. <laughs> does not require only a plan for you. Yeah. It requires prayer. Yeah. It requires a connection with the spirit. Yeah. It requires so Bram says down here we've got a nominal church just leave it as this then up there we've got a sublime he says here next to heaven that's where we are supposed to be where the powers of God 
is leaking. leaking. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Are you with me? This is a direct contact. Yeah. All right. It drop. It is drops on this drops. On so it leaks from here to here. Then here they get few drops, and here over there they get a few drops. Yeah. So today we don't want to get few drops. No. We don't want to get few drops. We, we want where it is leaking into. No. It says this is the nominal church. It just goes on, just old cold professions and little ritualistic affair. That is the nominal church. So they are coming to church, it's ritual. All right. If I don't go, people will ask where I am. Right. Okay. Hey brother, last week I was not there. Let me just go there and make sure that I appear yeah. and next week I'm not going. Right. Yeah. It's a nominal church. Uh -huh. it's, it's a ritual. Then, they just get a very slight drippings. The next church up here, full gospel church, get some of the blessings, but they go off into isms. All right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So this one, you, you, you know, one thing that I've realized is that you can be you can be a presbyterian in your former church and you come into the message and just become a reformed presbyterian in the message don't pretend like you don't know the people that are worshiping ministers in the message trace them some of them they come from ZCC. Yeah, that's true. All right. So they just need a, a ZCC version yes. of the message. Yeah. It's, a no, it's a nominal church. Then some, they get a bit of blessings, but they go into isms. And ism is when they say, we are the only one. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. And whatever it is in ism, when they will be wasm. Yeah. 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 Exactly right. We've got, he says, we've got to lift up into this fear here before we can ever have rapture. Exactly right. You've got to get up in that before you can ever have it. So the rapture is for this soul. No. Amen. No. Amen. Whatever heaven drops down or leaks, yeah. it drops into them. That's right. By the time it comes here, it's a, just a bit of drop. It's a bit of, but here it's an outpouring. That's right. Amen. And this is where we need to be. And, and you know what it means? Here nominally, that's when in some churches, if you say amen, everybody looks at you and says, okay. what, what, what happened? <laughs> Are you with me? Because they've got a certain order, a certain ritual, a certain program that they must adhere to. You can, if you raise your hand, they think, what's going on? Are you with me? It's formal. Here they've got a bit of life, but that a bit of life, they go into an easy. Yeah. All right. They can't think that shouting is the sign of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Where man shouts higher, but immediately after church is going to get friend. Oh, Are you with me? They, they've gone into an easy. Yeah. But uh, brother, take me to this church. Take me to this church. Let me tell you what this church is. It's men and women on Saturday night. Come on. They are on their knees. Yeah. Oh God, tomorrow we are going to church. Yeah. We don't know who's ministering, yeah. but we know you will be there. Yeah. May you take over yeah. and use your servant in a mighty way. Yeah. They come straight up. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when they are sitting there, a minister preaches something, they say, brother, hallelujah. Yeah. You know why they're saying hallelujah? It's exactly what they read during the week the pulpit is affirming what they were feasting on take me to a sublime church let me tell you something 
doesn't mean it's perfect. Yeah. Sinners will come, yeah. but they will be convicted, yeah. and they will repent, yeah. and they will find God. Yeah. Take me to this church. Are you with me? Yes. Sisters in this church, they don't worry about what dress you wore last week. Yes. Come on! Yes. When you raise your hand, you say, Hallelujah! Yes. And tears stream down your cheeks. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. They know that you must have a certain story. Yes. The Lord must have moved in a certain way. Yes. There is a story behind my praise. For me to be here, give me the church. Brothers in the church, they don't have time for church politics. After the service is done, it's time for fellowship. Do you hear it when the minister said this? Do you hear him when he said this? No time for politics. He was preaching about me. No, the people in this church, they say, Lord, speak to me. I'm here that you address me. Let my neighbor address me. But in the nominal church, I, they were preaching about you, my brother. But here, they say, it's me, it's me, Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. If not my brother, if not my sister, whatever heaven has got to speak, I am here, Lord. Some of them become broken, cars repossessed. When they say, David, you have repossessed my car, but you will never repossess my soul. Take me to this child. They understand who they are. Hallelujah. They are the job material. A job, ma job material. You know, job had what we call the mystery of the inner space. God says to the devil, deal with him. Anything external, deal with it. Yeah. But the soul, don't touch it. Yeah. 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 Come on now, man. Job yeah. said, the Lord has given. Yeah. The Lord has taken. Yeah. Let his name be praised. Yeah. Paul says, I'm learned to be happy when I have in a bound. Yeah. And I've learned to be happy in yeah. a city. Yeah. These are the kind of people that I want to worship with. They've got testimonies. They will tell you when things were tough, but they never went back. They will tell you when the battle was raging, but they never gave up. They will tell you when they were hated, but they never hated. They will tell you when they were rejected, but they never rejected God. Take me to this people. Whether you have money or you don't have money, they, pre they treat you with royalty. Yeah. God bless you, my brother. Yeah. Take me to this sublime yeah. church. Yeah. Not nominal. Yeah. I hate to be in a nominal church. Yes, sir. Nominal church in Namalu have a group Amen. that thinks is holy. Yeah. They become the police yeah. people. Yeah. <coughs> I will tell you, Brother Blessing, yeah. that I will share with you and your church. One of the hindrances of the growth of a message church sometimes is old timers that yes. don't understand yes. grace. Yes. 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 Preach! Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. You see this young man yeah. who was born in the message. Yeah. He was raised by the message parents. Yes. They expect somebody to come in and just be like him. Yeah. 
Yeah. If they see him differently, yeah. and you see a church, that boy, how he was. Yeah. Where does he come from? Yeah. Are, you, are you hearing me? Yeah. They want to achieve 40 year results in one service. Yeah. Let me tell you something, people. Yeah. Bridget, Bridget. We are not going to clean the fish in the water. We need to remove, take it out of the water first. While it is still in the water, you are in the wrong church. Yeah. We want them broken. Yeah. We want them however way they want, so that we can preach the gospel to them. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Amen. 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 There are sheep and there are lambs. Yeah. 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 And a sheep that it becomes impatient when we take care of the lamb, it may not be a sheep. Because if it was a sheep, it would say, I once was a lamb. I remember the days when I was a lamb. One day this is going to be a sheep. But if it is a goat, come on now! It will complain about the lamb. Were you born wearing a long dress? No, sir. That was a starting point. Were you understanding the message from A to Z? No. And in the luminary church, you even have groups. This one believes her hair should be this way, this corner. That one believes it that way. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Folks. Yeah, let me preach. Preach, Pastor. In the early years, we were taught. And we were mistaught yeah. that a veil symbolizes virginity. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It was a way to degrade sisters yeah. without any scriptural or messagical backing. Yeah. Until when the wedding comes, uh, when they missed it away, was she wearing a veil or not? Yeah. There's never a quotation. Come on! I've debated, Brother Sipono, I debated with one elder until he had to give up. I said that there is no quotation. The quotation says Rebecca put a veil because not she was a veil, because she did not have a head. And she was coming under head shield. Are you hearing me? Then Brother Brennan in your seven church age book, he says immediately, he says, as soon as the brother takes off the veil, now if you say the sister must not put on the veil, you are saying she's got a head shield somewhere. And if you marry her, that means you promote polygamy. Do you see you can break the types? Are you here? Brother Brennan, go and check when you get home. He says as soon as the brother comes, he removes the veil, then he puts the veil on the shoulder. Come on! It's a transfer of a kingdom. She puts the veil because she's a virgin. Go and check it. It's a Catholic top tribe. But it has no room in Malachi at all. Come on. We are here to preach the truth here. And whenever it was wrong, we reject it. Because we want to be right with Malachi. If you say she must not put on a veil, 
when brother Don says a veil is headship. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want her to acknowledge a headship? Somewhere. Somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Then why are you married to this man? Yeah. Pretty preacher. Sure. Wonderful. Wow. Uh, this one, brother, blessing, if it gets you into trouble, just say, disclaimer, that was brother Mary yeah. I take full responsibility yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. That is the word. Yeah. 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 If a sister is not a vision, it's a matter between her and her husband. Yeah. Yeah. Not here in the church, not here in the public. something so good and turn it and destroy yeah. Bible says the public sin must be condemned publicly yes. privately must be dealt privately yeah. Absolutely. I wonder how many young girls have missed marriages because they were dragged in the front that's freedom had it been stamped separately in a private yeah. room, maybe the results could have been different. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Nothing about you. Amen. Amen. I will be I preach this truth because I'm, I'm not short of friends and I'm going to be a friend of anyone. Amen. Whether you hear me and say I will not talk to my neighbor, fine. Minus one problem. Yeah. Ah, friends. Yeah. 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 They will not invite you. God is raising churches that invite us. One boy, somebody once threatened me that the way you preach, you'll never be invited. We've been to Trinidad, we've yeah. been to Namibia, we've traveled the world. Yeah. <laughs> because there are people that love the truth. Yeah. If one pulpit closed, another one opens. Yeah. But it's just I don't compromise my conviction. Yeah. What? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Yeah. Paragraph 8 0. Brother Ron says, and this is to you, love one another Amen. above Amen. everything. Amen. Love one another. Amen. No matter what the devil tries to say, now you are all one great big sheep group now. But remember my warning. Satan won't let that stay that way. No, sir. He will shoot everything. If he has to bring somebody in to make his target, he will bring some critic or unbeliever in and sit him down and cause him to fellowship with you under the quietness and things. 
then you will shoot that guy with some kind of a poison stuff and he will start through the church with it. Amen. Don't take sides with it. Don't you have nothing to do with anything else? Amen. You stay right, loving and sweet and kind to one another. Amen. Pray for that man that you will be saved to or that woman or ever who it is. Just pray for them. Amen. Stick one with another. Hallelujah. Amen. And stay with your pastor. Amen. He is the shepherd. You give him respect. Amen. He will lead you through. Amen. This one was abused. Yeah. It depends where you lead us to. Yeah. They said to people said to Joshua, with a blank check. People, brother, they are not following you, brother. Oh. They are following brother Baranem. Yeah. As the Malachi are for. Yeah. They follow you because you follow him. Right. The moment you step aside, they put you aside and they follow him. Yeah. Oh. That's, right. That's right. He is ordained of God to do so. Now, do you remember that? The enemy will come. Yeah. And the enemy will come. Yeah. Yeah. And when he does, just cling that much closer together. Right. And the one that the devil is using for an enemy will either get out or come in and be one of you. Amen. That's all. Are you with me? Amen. Now you've got tapes on that. You've got tapes on what we believe. You've got tapes on discipline in the church. How we behave ourselves in the church of God. How we got to come here together and sit in heavenly places. Don't stay at home. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Glory. forsaking not the assembling of the saints. Amen. Not forsaking, not, not forsaking data for YouTube. Amen. We, we want YouTube to watch when we are at home. But we need a home church. Amen. Don't stay at home. If God is in your heart, you can't hardly wait for them just to open out your now. To get in here to fellowship with your brothers. If you don't feel that way, then I tell you, it's time you've got to pray. Amen. Because why? We believe in fellowship. It is our desire as the original seed ministries that you will cling together and stay behind your pastor, pray for your pastor, and become a sublime church. Amen. And we are praying for you to carry on like that. God bless you, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, I have my friends. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, man, man. Man, how many say that was beautiful? Yeah. That, that was a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, you know, now I am, um, every invitation I get and I ask the pastor, how many services do you have? If he says six, I says, I'm coming with Pastor Matiba. So we are always now traveling together and we we love this message. We love this message to be preached in its purity. The word is the word. And you can never change the word and never twist the word. The word will stand for itself. The word will defend itself. That is why we thank God for the ministers that God has ordained. I was reading a quote in Fundisi. During the week in the message ten in Northward, 1960, Brother Brenham said something there. He says, he's talking about the Moses and the Joshua group. He says, the old timers must go. And he says the new generation must take them into the land. But he says the new generation, they are not the fighters. Yes. Because the older generation, what they know is to fight Pharaoh. But we don't know Pharaoh. Yeah. 
The only interest is to take the people into the promised land. And that is why we preach the message in its purity. And I like his standards. We preach in its purity because we don't have headquarters where some dollars are deposited into their accounts. So we are not moved because after you preach them, the headquarters can ask to say, what did you say? We are stopping the salary this month. So we are directed from the throne room of God. And I believe we are the sublime church. Let's bow our heads and we close our eyes. As we have bowed our heads and closed our eyes, maybe as the pastor was speaking, he was talking to you. I want us all to close our eyes. Maybe you say, Lord, help me with yes. my gossip spirit. Help me, oh God, search my heart in and know my heart today. You just raise your hand wherever you are. God is faithful and just to come to your rescue. God is there to take the old nature out and give you his own spirit. You raise your hand. Let us be reverent church. Let us not move around. The Holy Ghost is here. It was not Pastor Matthew preaching. Look beyond the veil. See, it was God talking to our hearts. We don't want to be a nominal church. But we want to be a sublime church where the blessings from heaven can leak directly to us as original sin ministries. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let the church say My rest, my 
virus is completely while I see and Jesus sweet, sweet spirit, sweet oh, my. I want to sing the song in the minute. Let's raise our voices and raise our hands. Sweep all, sweep all from my soul. say today we have feasted on your word Lord God Lord and we are spiritually around Lord Father God Lord God we oh Lord we are so thankful Lord God Lord that you can come in this day Lord God Lord where we know Lord God the needs Lord God the thoughts in our hearts Lord yes. God Lord and you meet us Lord Father God Lord you speak to those needs you speak to our hearts Lord God through the ministration of your word Lord God Many questions were answered today, Lord Father God, even myself, Lord God, Lord, with theoretical errors, Lord God, that we have been taught over the years, Lord God, but here you came, Lord God, speaking to our brother, Lord Father God, Lord, and making things right, Lord God, the, in the purity of your word, Lord God, and we appreciate it, Lord God. We know that many is going to even listen to this tape here after, Lord God, Lord, and may 
it reach them lord god in the spirit in which it was spoken here yes. lord god to yes. your people today lord father god lord we pray a blessing over him over his family lord god there's no doubt they'll be traveling back home lord god may your angel of father god lord protect them lord god may lord god you give you more revelation of your word lord god lord even lord god may it on the pastor's heart to have him speak to us again lord god may you bless him lord god lord for we know lord father god lord that we have received from you lord god lord may you bless your people today lord god lord truly lord god we are needy people lord god lord but lord god we come to the one who owns everything lord god and we take lord god we take our portion lord god our cup runneth over this morning lord god and we appreciate it lord god may you bless us now be with us lord god we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us even as we depart one from another lord god lord may you go with us lord god for we know lord god you are with us lord god even in us until the end of this world lord god we say thank you we give you all the thanks all the honor all the praise lord god it belongs to you lord god yes we give you thanks we pray this all in the name of the lord jesus christ